want to show you a really important uh, light mod that you absolutely should make. And by the way, before you comment, I know the lighting on my fa ugly face is already even more ghoulish. That is because I'm using this in a manner that is meant to be used as a secondary fill. Um, I'm using actually foam board and I'm using uh, aluminum, bright aluminum ducting to make this light mod. I'm going to show you what it looks like in a second. Now, uh, there's a specific device out there that costs a whole lot of money that does this exact same thing. It is a parabolic shaped reflector. This actually has higher reflectivity, but this is a very modular reflector you can use in a lot of different ways, and I designed it very simple, simple and very cheaply, but it'll last forever. It'll last you for the rest of your life, as long as you don't destroy it, just as with anything else. Now, right now, I'm using a, uh, my uh, illuminator from uh, my Einstein. I'm actually uh, using my ambient uh, from my Einstein 640 behind my left shoulder here. Sometimes the actual illumination, I'll actually place it uh, over top of the client's face where I'm actually underneath the studio strobe. But I'm using this as a secondary fill. This is great for taking the wrinkles out of old ladies. But I actually have this shaped in a parabolic manner, but I can actually lay it flat and it folds up and it's completely collapsible. It doesn't weigh anything and it'll cost you all of about five bucks. Actually a little bit less than five bucks to make. Uh, Three dollars of that is the actual aluminum. Let me turn on the main lighting so you can see what I'm talking about. I just wanted to get you... Yes, that was ghoulish lighting. You would never use this unless you were trying to take Halloween shots as a primary uh, source of illumination. Actually, let me turn on another light. I've got a few of these, and this is also why you should also always have a foam board in your house for making light mods. You can use this with the Illuminator Arm Extreme reflector here just as a white reflector. I can coat one of this black, one side of this black and the other side keep white and use it as a negative fill for the black side. Now let me take this off and show you what it is. Okay. First let me fold it up. Let me remove the Velcro off the side here. This is it folded up, and here we are looking at my little design. Okay, How do you make this? I actually make a cut halfway through using an X-Acto knife through the foam board. I actually use the thinner foam board uh, than this stuff. I've got lots of sheets of foam board around. And then I take each one of those sections and I cut it again. After I do that, I actually strengthen each joint with industrial duct tape. Okay? You'll notice I'll have uh, eight Velcro tabs back here. Two here, two here, two over here, two over here, and two down here. I'm going to show you what that's for in a second. So, I'm able to use this flattened out on my Illuminator Arm Extreme or uh, one of my uh, uh, reflector holders. Hold on a second. Just as a regular straight reflector if I want. I'm not going to actually set up my Illuminator Arm reflector here. But, I mean, it takes a couple seconds to attach. I can use this any way that I want to illuminate children, babies, take it to the beach. One of the best tools that I have is one of my Illuminator Arm Reflectors, that and my reflector holders. My reflector holders are great for holding uh, circular uh, reflector discs, but this is great for holding anything, including all of uh, my foam board uh, creations. One second, it's easier to drop it up this way. There we go. Get my illuminator arm out of the way. I'm surprised. I found out, I thought there'd be like at least a dozen videos on this arm reflector from Westcott. And there's only one, and it's in German. So anyway, this folds up obviously so. It doesn't weigh anything. What I did is I used, and I've always got a few rolls of this, this 3M silver ducting reflector tape laying around. You know, you sit in front of the TV for 20 minutes. I cut off each strip, laid down each strip. I can use this as a bare reflector on the ground. It'll actually stand up on its own. I could use it in my arm or my reflector holder as a, just a basic reflector that only takes a couple seconds to set up and it doesn't weigh anything. It packs flat for inside the car. Um, this is actually the perfect thing to take on a, uh, a run and gun where you don't want to have to take a hundred pounds of equipment in addition to your camera and your lenses like on a wedding shoot when you actually take shots outdoors 
set up a very simplex reflector, open it up, set up my light stand, pop on my illuminator arm reflector, use this as a reflector to actually balance out the dynamic range between my, uh, my ambient background and that of my uh, subject. The other thing that I've done is I've actually placed Velcro back here, and the reason for that is so I can actually place this in a parabolic fashion by using the Velcro back here to latch these at whatever angle I want. Okay. Hold on a second. And there we go. Make it caught at, like, right about that. That way I've actually locked in the parabolic shape of this wherever I want to set it. If I want to set it this way, this way, however I want to set it, I've locked in that parabolic shape. When I've got it locked into uh, one of my armatures that's on top of my light stand, I can do whatever I want. I can use this as a flat reflector, or I can use it as a parabolic uh, facial line. Like I said, this will take the wrinkles right out of somebody's face. You're not going to be using this as a primary source of illumination. I'm using this as a fill. This is all about layering light. This is not a primary illuminator, okay? Unless you actually wanted to use it that way at the correct lighting angle as a primary light using... Uh, using this as a reflector, you have a primary and have this as a secondary fill. I mean, in that case, you're using a primary light and your secondary light is your spill from your reflector wherever you place it relative to the subject that you're shooting. Primary use for this, however, in a parabolic fashion, as I showed you at the beginning of this video, is a secondary fill to take out the wrinkles. It actually creates a heavenly and angelic glow in someone's face where you actually have extremely low contrast and very diffuse values between all the contrast points in a person's face so that the, the contrast value is so low between the specular, the midtone, and the shadow that it actually washes the wrinkles right out of someone's face. I mean, not everything. Back in the days of film, there was no Lightroom. You know, we couldn't open up a software product. We had to get the lighting right in camera. And it's a lot easier to do it that way. It's just like, well, you know, screw it. I can take the wrinkles out in Photoshop or take it online. That takes time. How about I actually get the lighting right to begin with, and they don't have to screw around so much? A lot of photographers, the, the more that they learn, the more that they realize that they don't want to screw around with sifting through hundreds of files and sitting there with each little damn picture. When you have to deliver 30, 40 clients, or more than that, if it's a wedding shoot, to a client, if you're pissing all your time away at night in Lightroom, and you could have got it right to begin with in the damn camera, you realize, oh gee, time is money. Maybe I could have eliminated out a lot of those wrinkles and issues with the correct lighting by using a correct uh, reflector and actually uh, narrowing down the dynamic range values of the exposure of the person or subject it is that I'm shooting. So anyway, think about making one of these. It's very easy. I've had this one for quite a long time. It's still in great shape. I've had to patch it a couple times. You know what patching one of these involves? Uh, I either grab another piece of uh, aluminum uh, ducting tape and repair a patch or a scratch, which doesn't even show up, or I grab another piece of, uh, of uh, industrial electrical tape, not electrical tape, excuse me, uh, uh, industrial uh, duct tape. So that's it. This is a light mod that everybody should actually build because it is universally useful. It stands up on its own. It's perfect for product shots, baby shots, macro shots, portraiture, uh, uses a secondary fill. This is the Swiss Army knife of light mods. And it's really ch cheap to make, very easy to make. Now you're talking about a poster board, some industrial duct tape, some Velcro tabs, and some of this uh, silver uh, ducting. This is actually true aluminum. It's not a tape or like a paint coloring. It is actually, because when you're laying this uh, tape down, it will cut you because it actually is real aluminum with the removable peel-off backing for those of you who've never used uh, aluminum ducting tape before. So anyway, that's it. I'm a little amped up on caffeine, so I apologize, but, uh, you know, make it. It's simple. It's cheap, and it's universally useful regardless of the type of photography you do. Actually, I can say that this is totally useless for birds in flight photography. <laughs> it's useless for bird photography, so I'll actually backpedal on that statement. Okay? Thanks. Bye!